exactly. So I like to uh, say that we are seeing the end of stability in Japanese politics. And this end, sudden end of uh, uh, Japanese political stability actually shocked many, many people. Uh, I mean, within the national diet, uh, both within the ruling parties and opposition parties. So they are more or less at loss of what they should do next. Hello, everybody. This is Pascal from Neutrality Studies, and today I'm talking to Professor Yuichi Hosoya, who's a professor of international politics at Keio University in Tokyo. Keio is Japan's most prestigious private university. Previously, Professor Hosoya was also a member of the advisory board of Japan's National Security Council and part of several advisory panels to the prime minister on issues like reconstruction, security and defense. But today we want to mainly focus on the recent Japanese parliamentary elections because they reshuffled a lot and the outcome was not quite as uh, expected and as hoped for by the ruling party, which also got a new uh, prime minister only like one and a half months ago. But um, about all of this, Professor Hosoya will give us his insights. So Professor Hosoya, welcome to the show. Thank you for your invitation. Professor Hosoya, can you pr maybe explain to us first and foremost, why is it that one and a half, two months ago, the ruling LDP party, which at that point had a majority in parliament, got a new leader? And then the new leader became prime minister. And then the prime minister dissolved parliament and said, we're going to do re a snap election. And then the snap election actually led to his party losing its majority. Like how, why, why this process? Well, thank you very much. Uh, one year ago, one year ago, we couldn't imagine this happens because uh, one year ago, we thought that the LDP uh, government was quite stable and uh, continue to be stable. So we expected last year that that stability uh, would continue. But this is ending or ended largely because of the two biggest problems. One problem is that, uh, well, a financial uh, scandal uh, within the LDP. In general, it was revealed this year that LDP had a big uh, scandal in uh uh, political uh, finances, uh, I mean, the financial resources. And uh, that uh, caused a kind of a structural uh, 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 change in within the LDP about ruling, about the relationship among uh, factions, major factions. And soon after that, uh, Prime Minister Kishida decided to dissolve uh, factions, which had actually a three, four, five decades history. And actually, Kishida belonged to the oldest faction. It was called uh, Kochikai. Uh, even in his some pol policy speeches, foreign policy, foreign policy speeches overseas, he even mentioned the name of his own faction, Kochikai. So it means that he was, and still perhaps is, quite proud of belonging to belonging to the oldest mainstream faction within the LDP. So one of the biggest aims, uh, from my point of view, uh, of uh, Prime Minister uh, Kishida was to enlarge the influence of his own faction within the LDP. But unfortunately, and strangely, he decided to dissolve all the factions, particularly his own faction. So that's why that was the beginning. I mean, the, in this generally, we saw the beginning of a huge structural change within the LDP. But that was not quite often mentioned or covered by international media. But that actually uh, originated, that was originated in January this year. So this uh, was the biggest uh, uh, a change. And the second biggest uh, problem of the change was a Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba's decision to have a snap election. He thought that he could win because of some arrogance of the LDP diet members and uh, largely because of the weakness of opposition parties. So it was quite uh, 
understandable that LDP was a little bit arrogant when they decided, to, I mean, it decided to have a snap election uh, just a month before. So uh, because of the two big uh, problems, one is, uh, well, uh, LDP's uh, scandal, financial scandal, mm -hmm. and as the second one is Prime Minister Ishiba's uh, big uh, uh, political gamble. So because of these two problems, I think that now LDP is in a really difficult situation. Yeah, and I think it's important to know the LDP has been ruling Japan for a really long time, basically since the 1960s, with a few breaks in 1993 and one in 2009 to 2011 or 12. Uh, very short breaks. But the LDP itself then looks like a, a big and powerful party, but it's actually it has a lot of factions that also fight against each other, also with their policy views. Um, so it's not it's not as coherent as it looks from the outside. And the gamble that when an, uh, the prime minister, of course, has the constitutional right to send parliament home and call elections. And this gamble sometimes used to pay off, especially under the very long Abe administration. I think Abe did it at least once, if not twice, that he called snap elections. And both times it worked. When, after the election, he came out stronger than before. And so Ishiba still thought that despite this internal um, uh, huge turmoil and, and scandals, that he could still win against the other uh, opposition parties. Exactly, this is the case. Uh, first of all, I really like to mention that uh, Shinzo Abe uh, was really a political genius. <laughs> he was really exceptional prime minister who won election uh, eight times uh, continuously over the seven and eight years. So uh, it was quite exceptional in even in the LDP's history. In many ways, it was and still is very difficult for the LDP to, be on, to win over the both houses, I mean, the upper house and the lower house. So uh, in many ways, in many cases, LDP often lost either upper house or lower house with its minority government or a kind of a, a nejire kokai, which means a kind of a divided government with a majority in lower house and a minority in the upper house. So it was always difficult for the LDP prime minister to govern. But maybe Ishiba forgot about that, forgot about the difficulty of creating a stability and the majority both in the upper house and the lower house. So that's why I think that Ishiba uh, underestimated the difficulty of winning uh, the elections nationally, and he failed to do that. Do you think there was also an element of Ishiba trying, just trying his luck, that, um, you know, that if he doesn't dissolve parliament and he continues to rule, then he would look weak because he, because the his power would be built on previous elections where he was he was not a nobody but he was way not an important that much of an important figure did he actually want to try to consolidate and say like okay either i can can rule with a, with a good majority or worst case worse i step back because had the had the election been even worse for him i don't think he would have been able to stay on as head of the ldp or what do you think about that and do you think that there's chatter about that will will the pressure on him to actually step back and take responsibility for this loss will that be there inside the ldp uh, right i think these are important points uh, to consider about number one uh ishiba is prime minister ishiba is different from prime, either prime minister abe or prime minister kishida uh from the point of view of having a uh, a very solid, strong foundation within the LDP. First of all, Abe led the big, biggest faction within the LDP. Abe's, it's his own faction was the biggest in the LDP. That's why he could have a very solid a base within the LDP. On the other hand, as I mentioned, Kishida led a third or fourth biggest faction, but his faction has been always a kind of a mainstream one of the oldest factions and one of the most influential, powerful factions. And it 
uh, belongs to quite liberal wing. So in many ways, uh, uh, by having uh, uh, some kind of a support from uh, uh, Abe's faction, I would say that uh, Kishida also also enjoyed a kind of a stability within the LDP, having a strong political foundation. But Ishiba actually doesn't have a faction. He has a faction, but most of them already left his faction. So his uh, faction, uh, if we can call it a faction, is one of the smallest. And because uh, he actually uh, lost uh, uh, LDP leadership elections previously four times. So many have already left. This is one thing. He didn't have a political foundation to govern the LDP. The second point is, what I want to emphasize on is that he has been, in the last decade or so, uh, he has been the most popular candidate for the next prime minister. So he had a good reason to be quite arrogant or confident about his own popularity with a quite weak uh, supporting rate for the opposition parties. So if he believed in these kind of a public opinion poll, I think that uh, he had a good reason why he misunderstood the uh, intention of voters. So this is why I think he wanted to have a earlier snap election rather than later snap election. But he failed largely because of his own gamble. That's why, as you mentioned, I think that there are many within the LDP who are really angry about his political gamble as well as his way of ruling the party. He is a really good speaker, but he's not a good uh, governor or a good uh, uh, ruler. Uh, uh, or a big institution. That's why uh, there are growing frustrations among uh, the that member of the LDP. So do you think he will have a long shelf life as prime minister? <laughs> how, if you had to, if you had to bet, what would you really say? How long will he be prime minister of Japan? Well, number one, uh, now uh, the, the problem of LDP uh, is both structural and personal. Personal means that Ishiba has some sort of personal problem of being a really popular, reliable, trustworthy leader within the LDP. Uh, this is a personal problem. Structural problem is that, uh, well, as I mentioned, in January this year, there was a big political scandal of the LDP, financial scandal. Uh, that's why... Uh, Anybody, I mean, the, within the LDP, would face difficulty of having a, such a very strong criticisms from the voters. So, uh, well, uh, even if other candidate uh, would win the LDP leadership election, I imagine that a similar uh, kind of result happened in a slightly different way. So, in this way, uh, because of uh, Ishiba's personal problem and the LDP the structure problem, many within the LDP are now quite reluctant or hesitant to succeed Ishiba's post, facing such a strong criticism from outside. So in this way, I don't think that anyone so like Sanae Takaichi would soon try to remove Ishida from the current post. Maybe they yeah. are taking a kind of a wait and see strategy to see the changing tide of voters. So having seen that uh, voters are becoming more uh, welcoming new prime minister from the LDP, maybe Takaichi or any other would be willing to replace the current Ishiba's role as Japanese prime minister. That's interesting. So you're saying that there is a chance that although Ishiba is quite weak inside the LDP, because nobody wants the position and, and run the risk of taking the, the hits that will come automatically from the problems that are still running, that he might actually be just sitting there and get a second lease on life in a sense that if he manages to rebuild trust and, and solve the problems, he might stay on. But if, uh, well, uh, if not, he might just take the punches until somebody um, somebody will replace him. Uh, and the, the, the coalition government is also not, not done yet, is it? Like, the, exactly. the it's not clear yet who will be in cabinet now that the LDP has to share power 
with other parties in order to maintain a majority in, in parliament. Exactly. So I like to uh, say that we are seeing the end of stability in Japanese politics. And this end, sudden end of uh, uh, Japanese political stability actually shocked many, many people. Uh, I mean, within the national diet, uh, both within the ruling parties and opposition parties. So they are more or less at loss of what they should do next, op including opposition parties. So opposition parties are now finding their best way to be more popular or influential within the national diet because there will be a, a perhaps election next year. So the task is, task ahead for them is to win over the next year's upper house election. So in this way, they wouldn't perhaps uh, prioritize political stability. At the cost of political stability, they naturally try to or intend to increase their sheets in the upper house election. So you're saying that it's the, the structural incentive for the smaller opposition parties is not to try to join the government and create a a fragile a majority government, but to actually keep on fighting on their own and try to try to basically win over uh, 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 voters in one year time, which which only leaves basically a minority government, right, for the LDP and for the for the entire. I mean, if nobody wants to join, then they have to go it, go it alone. But that means that they will have huge problems passing the budget uh, and and any kind of policy. Uh, a recommendation in parliament. Exactly. So many that members, both within the government and outside of the government, many are abandoning Prime Minister Ishiba. Mm. I mean, uh, both within the LDP, outside of the LDP. So are they, uh, after the election, after seeing the outcome of the election, many now feel that uh, Ishiba's uh, cabinet is quite weak and declining. That's why it would be quite unwise for them to help Ishiba at the cost of losing their popularity among voters. That's why maybe like within the LDP, there will be no, uh, there will be much less influential players who are willing to support or help Ishiba's efforts to continue to govern. And also uh, within the opposition parties, I think that they are also thinking that it is quite unwise to support quite now increasing unpopular uh, Prime Minister Ishiba's cabinet. So their strategy must be to take a distance from uh, Prime Minister Ishiba's cabinet to gain support. And it would be much easier for them. I mean, the uh, rivals to Prime Minister Ishiba within the LDP and the opposition parties as well, uh, they would think that it would be much wiser to criticize the current cabinet from outside. So could it be that we are now in the beginning of a transition period, again, away from the LDP to something else? Because it's also quite important that the main opposition party, the Constitutional Democratic Party, which is the successor to the previous uh, um, um, DPJ, the Democratic <laughs> Party of Japan, um, which is a left-wing, kind of a social democratic party, if you want to compare it to Europe, right? Um, that successor is now led a by a by a um, popular former prime minister, and it's kind of it's having a momentum now. So, do you think the, the that party is is going to try to maybe maybe sway over more more voters and get back into power? I mean, Mr. Noda is um, is is a very popular person figure in Japan, isn't he? Well, uh, one of the most interesting points that we have seen in the last decade or so is that the share of votes of those ruling parties, I mean the LDP and the Komeito, and opposition parties are nearly the same. I mean, it's quite a steady. So uh, one of the biggest differences is now we don't have any integrated single powerful opposition parties because opposition parties are hating and are criticizing each other. So with such a weak, uh, quite divided opposition parties, it is quite unlikely that opposition parties could form a kind of a coalition against the LDP, seeing such a weak 
opposition parties or divided the situation of opposition parties. I think that the LDP uh, uh, could uh, be quite uh, arrogant or confident in maintaining power. But still, even Ishiba actually lost the recent, the most recent election, but still opposition parties are fighting each other, writing rather than fighting with the ruling parties. So this situation is a fundamental to see why opposition party actually cannot take the power. Yeah, so that, that in a sense, that's a good news for the LDP, but that's also the way the Japanese system is structured, right? The electoral system is made in a way that as long as you have a lot of smaller parties, they will take they will take uh, vote shares from each other. And then the first past the post system, although it's a mixed system, uh, will give disproportionately more votes, uh, more more seats in parliament to the LDP. So in a sense, the LDP is going through a crisis, but the chances that they will be unseated is still rather low. Well, maybe both would be the case. Number one, uh, Ishiba would perhaps form a minority government. And it, it would be natural for Prime Minister Ishiba or the LDP to try to expand a coalition. But of course, opposition parties, smaller opposition parties are not willing to uh, 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 participate in the coalition. So it means that uh, LDP needs to uh, remain a minority government. And uh, in each cases and um, each bills, I hope, I, I suppose that the LDP really uh, need to have a some kind of a partner to pass the bills. So in this way, I think LDP continue to suffer from the instability and the difficulty in passing bills. And this continues, I suppose. Now, I mean, Japan is not a stranger to um, moments, even extended moments of rapid change of government. This happens occasionally, and it goes back way back, even before the Second World War, that prime ministers change on a yearly basis or even more. And that, you know, political turmoil keeps up ending one coalition after another um, in such periods of time. Who actually runs Japan? Because Japan doesn't sink into the ocean. Japan still functions, um, even in times of crises, like uh, in, during the Fukushima incident and so on. Although there you had a more or less stable government. But, you know, even in, in transitional periods, Japan still works. Who will call the shots? I mean, if foreign governments want to do deals with Japan and count on the fact that they will be lived up to, who do they call? Well, uh Number one, to maintain a quite stable government in Japanese politics, prime minister or the cabinet must be both popular and stable. And uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe had both stability and popularity. And uh, Prime Minister Kishida had only stability without the popularity. And, uh, well, Ishiba only had a popularity without stability, but Ishiba is now losing popularity as well. So uh, having seen this, uh, I suppose that another era of Japanese instability is now coming. And uh, well, uh, one of the biggest reasons why uh, Abe could form such a stable uh, a cabinet government uh, would be because of Suga, Yoshihide Suga, was extremely powerful chief cabinet secretary. At the same time, so, uh, well, like when we look at uh, quite the uh, longest serving or longer serving prime minister like Nakasone or uh, Junichiro Koizumi and so on, they all had the really powerful chief cabinet secretary as a cabinet minister, like uh, Yasuo Fukuda as the chief cabinet secretary of Junichiro Koizumi's government. So if uh, Ishiba can have a really powerful, influential, stable chief cabinet secretary. Maybe that person can stabilize Japanese politics. And the current one, I mean, the chief cabinet secretary today is Hayashi Yoshimasa. And Hayashi can become really influential, powerful, stable chief cabinet secretary. So if uh, Ishiba heavily relies on the uh, kind of a capability and the talent of Yoshimasa Hayashi to create a stability in Japanese politics, 
I think that the month by month, uh, Ishiba's government can regain the kind of uh, stability, but uh, still, I don't think that uh, Ishiba, uh, Prime Minister Ishiba, is good at uh, creating or knowing uh, how to create a stability. So in this way, maybe uh, he would cause many, many new problems. Uh, alongside with these new problems, I don't think that Hayashi-san, as a chief cabinet secretary, uh, can solve those difficult problems to regain stability and popularity among the voters. Very interesting. A lot will, in that case, depend on next next year's uh, upper house elections to see how they managed to uh, to kind of um, um, make up with the, with the electorate. But in the meantime, what does that mean for Japan's foreign policy? I mean, right now. Uh -huh.